In this video, I'm gonna cover perhaps the most basic yet crucial form of technical analysis, and that's support and resistance. Having a solid understanding of this can help you know when might be a good time to buy stocks or options to maximize your profit. Let's get into it. Since no one really knows which direction a particular stock is gonna move at any given time, the best you can do when trading or investing is putting probabilities on your side by doing analysis. And by no means am I an expert, nor am I a financial professional, but I think having a firm grasp on support and resistance will help you a lot with your trading. Analysis can be broken down into three main categories. You have fundamental analysis, quantitative analysis, and technical analysis. Most investors start with a fundamental analysis of a company, which is basically evaluating all the aspects of that business and the market it operates in. You'd also analyze the assets, both tangible and intangible, that the company owns. You would also take into account economic factors, like the strength of the economy and industry-specific conditions. From there, you as an investor could determine if you think that the company is undervalued and worth a buy, or maybe you think it's overvalued and not worth looking into at this time. Quantitative analysis looks at the historical performance of a company and can tell you things like earnings per share or price to earnings ratio, which can help give you an idea if you think a company is undervalued or overvalued. You'd use quantitative analysis in conjunction with fundamental and or technical analysis. Technical analysis helps you determine future performance of a stock by analyzing trends and identifying patterns with data. So technical analysis is more focused on the price and volume, whereas fundamental and quantitative analysis looks more at the business fundamentals like earnings and revenue. Now in this video, I'm gonna cover support and resistance, which is a type of technical analysis. Now when investing in the stock market, you'd wanna analyze a company using all three forms of analysis and never just relying on one. If you look at a stock's chart, it's giving you a pretty good idea on how that stock price moves over time. It shows you where there are a lot of buyers supporting the price and even pushing the price up. And it also shows you where the sellers are, keeping the price from hitting certain levels and even pushing it back down. Support is the area where sellers have a hard time pushing the price below. This area can stop a downward trend from continuing downward. I think of it as the floor, which is supporting the price. So if support is the floor, then resistance is the ceiling. This is where you can find sellers stepping up and creating downward pressure, making it hard for the stock to get past that level. This can stop an upward trend from continuing upward. So in order to find support and resistance levels, you need to have access to a charting platform. Most brokerages will have this built in. For example, Thinkorswim, which I use for most options trading, has great charting tools built in, which makes it really convenient. Even Webull has pretty decent charting tools. And if you're on Robinhood, well, you could look at a chart, but that's about it. Most traders that I know use TradingView for charting, which is a really great platform, and you can even start using it for free. So whatever you use, open it up, type in a ticker for whatever stock you wanna analyze, and let's get started. So I like to start by getting a big picture idea of the stock's price history. Here, I'm set to the daily time frame, meaning each candlestick represents one trading day. I can see how the stock has moved going back several years. So I'm looking to see how the stock has been moving over time. Has it been consistently going up? Has it been chopping back and forth and not making any significant moves either way? Or has it been straight up parabolic? I also wanna see where the all-time high is that the stock has reached and where it is now in relation to that all-time high. So here, I have Adobe pulled up. I can see that after the market dipped, it had a nice recovery and hit an all-time high of $536 at the beginning of September. Since then, it dropped to around $438, almost $100 off of its all-time high. It's tried to push up several times, but it's gotten smacked back down by the sellers. But over the last four months, you can see that sellers have been unable to push the price below 438. In fact, this 456 to 458 area have held nicely. What I would then do is mark my charts with both support lines and resistance lines. In trading view, I'm gonna use the horizontal ray tool to add them. So now we can see Adobe's current price is right around our area of support. Historically, what happened when price has entered this area? Well, here in September, it touched that area and then worked its way back up. When it touched a second time, it actually broke through. Now this could have been related to the presidential election as the market as a whole was down around this time. And ever since, this area held up the price, making it a pretty strong level of support. So as I mentioned, currently the price is back around this area of support. So we could see a bounce here or we could see it break through and continue downwards. So going into this next week, I would wanna keep a close eye on Adobe and see how it's reacting to this level. If we see buyers stepping up, defending that 458 area, and we're bullish on Adobe as a company, 
and the market as a whole, well, this may be a good time to buy. Now, if buyers don't step up and sellers push through this level, well, now is probably not a good time to buy Adobe and we wanna wait and see where the price moves to next. So this is where you could pair support and resistance with other forms of technical and fundamental analysis. On the technical side, we can see that it's in a bit of a bullish pennant formation with Adobe making lower highs, which could indicate a breakout to the upside might happen in the near future. Support and resistance don't just have to be horizontal lines across your chart. Let's take a look at another example. Here is 3M on the daily chart. It's currently 35% off from its all-time high of $259. We can see it's been on an uptrend since March since it's creating higher highs as well as higher lows. But it also looks a bit noisy with lots of pullback at times and sideways choppy movement other times. Let's draw a trend line from this area here in March up and to the right. We want to draw our trend line so it touches as many of those higher low candlesticks as possible. Now let's draw a trend line touching as many of the higher highs as possible. With these two trend lines drawn, we've created a parallel channel, visualizing the uptrend and also identifying the range that the stock has mostly been trading in. Also, most platforms have a tool to draw this parallel channel, like here in TradingView, we can do this pretty easily. Obviously, there are a few candlesticks outside of our range, which is fine because charts are never technically perfect. It just helps us get an overall idea of what might happen next. So this channel can actually give you an idea of this trend's support and resistance. If price comes around the top of our channel, it gets hit back down. And conversely, when price comes to the bottom of the channel, it works its way back up. Right now, price is at the bottom of an ascending channel. So if it continues this type of movement, we could expect price to go up and make new highs for the year. But if it breaks down outside of this channel, I might leave it alone. That's a deal breaker, ladies. Let's go over another example, but this time I wanna show you the support resistance flip. Here on Alibaba, we can see the stock has had trouble getting over this range here. It'll touch it and then the sellers push it back down. Once it finally broke through that area of resistance, that area now acts as support. So the stock hit $232 and came back down to retest the breakout. Buyers stepped up in the zone and push the price back up. And then it finally broke that $232 range by gapping up. So now we can look for BABA to come back and test this area again, expecting the buyers to step up here. That flip from resistance to then support is something that you'll often see, and it works the other way around as well. Often areas of former support will turn into new areas of resistance when a stock drops below this key level. So a lot of traders use similar levels of support and resistance when charting stocks. And many traders will set their stop loss limit right below an area of support. So basically they can exit the trade if a stock drops below this key area. But market makers know this and they can push the price lower to trigger these stop loss orders and then push the price right back up. This is known as a stop loss hunt because price is essentially getting pushed past these key levels to force traders out of the trade. While fairly simple in theory, identifying these strong levels of support and resistance does take time and practice, and it's something that I'm constantly trying to improve upon. I recommend pulling up charts of 20 of your favorite companies on Sunday evening and going through the charts, marking them with support and resistance levels. You can start on the weekly timeframe where every candlestick represents one week and then move to the daily and even hourly timeframes in order to identify the best entry point to enter a trade. Also, the more times a certain level has been tested, the more significant that level probably is. And if it's been tested over a longer period of time, it's also an indication of a strong level. The other thing to keep in mind is you wanna use these levels to identify where you want the stock price to be at before you buy in. This requires patience and resisting the urge to FOMO in on a stock just because it's pumping. You may miss out on a hype train to the moon, but you also won't be chasing a stock that might come back to test key levels of support and burn you along the way. So here, Wayfair dropped below my support level. So if it comes back up and I'm bullish on it, I can create an alert to let me know when it does and I can enter a long position. And we can see it had a nice pump after testing that level. Here on NVIDIA, maybe I'm expecting another test of the support level, so I can set an alert when it's at or below $506, so I can keep an eye on it.
So those are the basics of support and resistance. It's the cornerstone of technical analysis, so I recommend you spend time going over these key levels. This can help you get a better idea of a stock price's movement and help you nail your entries to maximize your profit. Also, this works with just about any type of trading, whether it's options, futures, forex, or equities. But of course, no one form of analysis is foolproof, so use this in conjunction with other information to make smart decisions. If you would do me a big favor and hit the thumbs up button on this video, it'll really help this channel out, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. That's it for this one, I will see you in the next one. Bye.